got a light. <coughs> Why, yes. Hmm. Looks like this lighter needs some fixin'. just love an opportunity to bring an antique back to life. In this video, I will outline the steps involved in restoring this vintage Champette 1950s cigarette lighter. This will include disassembly, cleaning, repair, and reassembly. Restoring a vintage lighter can be a fun project for collectors and enthusiasts alike. With a few simple tools and techniques, I'll show you how easy it is to bring these lighters back to their former glory. But before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to the YouTube creator Dependable Flame. His videos have helped me out tremendously while learning how to restore lighters. I highly recommend checking out his channel for more in-depth tips and tricks. With that being said, let's begin. Let's start by taking apart this lighter. The actual lighter mechanism is actually an insert, so we'll simply just pull that out of the red case. Now this took some finessing. Keep in mind this lighter is probably 70 plus years old and probably hasn't been cleaned for some time. I made this look easy, but this insert was not wanting to budge. I eventually had to stick a knife down the side to loosen it up. Once the lighter has been set free, it's time to clean the guts out. To access the inside of the case, you'll first want to undo the flint screw. The flint is what creates a spark along with the flint wheel, which in return lights the wick. You'll simply unscrew and the spring will pop out. The spring is what holds the flint in place underneath the wheel. Doesn't look like this has any flint left in this lighter. We'll come back to this a little bit later. We'll now work on removing the old cotton. The flint screw actually removes the bottom plate. I guess I gave myself extra work not remembering this. Eventually you're going to see this bottom plate pop off, showing the inside of the case, making things much easier. Now back to what I was saying earlier, the cotton. Old lighters are filled with cotton, which is what you soak with lighter fluid. Only the Lord knows when and if this has ever been replaced. Simply just pull that old cotton out and toss aside. As you'll be able to see, a pair of tweezers comes in handy a lot throughout this video, something I'm sure everyone can find laying around the house. The wick is located in this part as well. This wick has definitely seen better days, so let's pull that out too. And that's it. We're officially done with clearing the guts out of this old lighter. Let's return back to the flint tube. Where I'm pointing to now is where the flint sits when it's screwed in with the spring, which sits nice and snug against the flint wheel. When restoring vintage lighters, the flint tube is probably the most difficult step because flint, when left for many years, can basically become cement and clog the tube. You can check if it's clear by simply unwinding a paper clip and shoving it up the tube. We got very lucky today because it looks like this tube is clear. Let's revisit the flint wheel. Over time, grime can build up along the grooves of the wheel. To fix this, you can take something pointy and sharp to clean out the small crevices. You can also use sandpaper to help you out with this. To make sure this puppy is clean, you can place any loose parts in a bowl of rubbing alcohol. While we're on the subject, let's give this guy a good bath. For this part, I soaked some cotton pads in rubbing alcohol and started scrubbing. As you can see, a Q-tip came in handy for the smaller nooks and crannies on this lighter. Look at the grime coming off of this thing. And with that, we are finally done with the cleaning process. For 
restoring vintage lighters, you can find replacement repair kits ready and available on Amazon. And they're pretty cheap too. Mine was only about 10 or $12. Mine came with a new wick, cotton, and felt bottom, which this lighter was missing. The first thing we're gonna wanna tackle is putting in a new wick. I accomplished this by fishing the wick through the wick hole using a paper clip. Now for the top of the wick that actually gets lit, you'll want to leave it about even with the chimney which is this middle metal piece where my finger is at seen in the video. Once the wick is in place, we're basically going to snake the wick through alternating with cotton and the wick until it's eventually full. So you'll start off bending the wick so it is snug up against the top inside of the case. The wick is wrapped in wire, making it easy to bend and manipulate the wick however you need it. Now you will start stuffing with cotton, and then push the wick down and keep stuffing, and repeat the process until the case is fully stuffed with a cotton, ending with the cotton so the wick is not showing. And don't forget to stuff cotton around the flint tube. Every area in this case should be filled and stuffed tight with cotton. Once the case is full, we'll reach back into our repair kit and pull out a felt pad. We will stuff this felt pad at the bottom. The felt pad helps with evaporation and fuel flow, which in the end provides a longer fuel life. It also keeps everything nice and snug. Now it's time to insert the new flint. We will be using Blue Alfred Dunhill Flint. There are many different types of flint out there, but this one should work in just about any vintage lighter. Simply drop that sucker down the tube and screw the spring back into place. You're also going to want to make sure to separate the wick at the top to ensure it lights well. Well, we're pretty much close to being done here, folks. For the last and final step, we will need some fuel. I picked up this lighter fuel at Walmart for about $3. It should work perfectly. Now, when fueling, you don't want to go overboard. Just saturate enough so that it's coated but not dripping wet. We don't need to ignite our house here. Simply lift the felt piece up and soak the cotton. You do not soak the felt, just the cotton in the case. Alrighty, that ought to do it. I ended up not putting the metal bottom that was originally on the bottom of this lighter. It fits better into the case and as I was researching, I found that many don't even have a bottom or they're not commonly used or necessary. Looks like this lighter is ready for a new life. Just slip it back into the case and it's practically like brand new. Let's revisit with our friend from earlier to see if now we can successfully light her pretzel cigarette. Got a light? <clears throat> Why, yes. Ah, 
there's just nothing quite like a vintage lighter. They just don't make them the way they used to. I think lighters are a great place to start if you are interested in restoring antiques. The process is relatively simple and cheap, and the end result is satisfying. For more nostalgic projects and adventures, please consider liking and subscribing for more. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, my friends. Bye.